live from the Key TV studio to your TV and on the web, it's Homework Hotline. Go to homeworkhotline.tv to ask your math or science questions. Welcome to Homework Hotline. My name is Amy Taylor and I teach 8th grade math at Sunnybury Middle School in Arcata. And my name's Pam Halstead. I taught science at Fortuna High School. Yay, welcome to the show. It's spring season. It still started just during this week and we're back and we're so excited. And yes. we'd love to answer your science and math questions. Um, just a little thing that's a little different. You can still watch us on Key TV. Um, and you can still watch us on YouTube. You go to homeworkhotline.tv. It's just when you get there, instead of chatting or calling, you're going to email, and it's right on there at homeworkhotline.tv. You'll see the email, you can email us, and then watch us on YouTube, watch us on TV on Kate TV, and then email us, and we'll answer your questions um, via email. It'll pop up and we can see that. So then we can answer your math and science yes, questions. Yes, very which we'd love cool. to do. We would, definitely. <laughs> Please do call. Or, or, I'm sorry, email. Call email, or email. email. Don't call at all. Call. Look, what I just said was wrong. <laughs> okay, this is an example of things we're learning. <laughs> okay, email. thank you, Amy, for saying the right thing. Um, did, were, did you hear all that rain last night? Oh, it was beautiful. It helped it me was. fall asleep. Oh, that's so cool. I was like, <gasps> flooding, it's going to flood. Uh, <laughs> so there's the difference. I mean, I just had this sort of thing like, gosh, if it keeps up, uh, an inch and a half is what I got in oh, our rain wow. gauge. Yeah. Well, we're used to ish. I mean, Humboldt County is better than like if that does that in LA or something. You know what oh, I mean? We're sure. more yes. used to the rain. It's and true. We actually have places where the water can go. Yes, that's so really good, true. So. Yeah, someplace in, you know, um, where all the fires are in, in Australia, I think it was Melbourne that had uh, three inches of rain within like, I don't know, 24, 48 hours. Oh, whoa. Can you imagine an inch and a half, just, you know, how much yeah, that was? Yeah, but we're just more used to it. I just think of like all the plants needed. I think of the rivers next summer. I think of the fish. I don't know when yes. it's raining. I'm like, we need rain here. Yeah. This is it's important. So true. And we're still behind by four inches from uh, what is considered normal. And all normal is, is taking all the rain totals and averaging them, doing yeah. the mean. You'd look at what's the average Right, so you know some are l really low and others are high, but then they just take all those average numbers out, yeah, and so. average out. So anyway, yeah, our average here is 40 inches. So remember that one show we had where we did yeah. like, like and Del Norte is like 10 more inches than us, oh, which geez. is crazy. Just because of the yeah. north, I'm sure Oregon and Washington are more too. Oh yes, <laughs> yes for sure. Oh, I just I tell you, I'm wearing my math leap shirt for math counts. It's an eighth grade math competition nationwide. Um, if I, I didn't tell you, you didn't hear about Tuesday, and you just do fun math problems, and it's like, you can do it locally, you can go up to nationally, if you go to mathcounts.org, there's fun math problems. Um, we just finished our tournament <laughs> at my school, four kids make the team, I had four kids tie for fourth, I've never had that, so I didn't have that spot, and they did a extra test today, it was all stressful, and one made it, and then... 10 of you, if you're at your school, 10 of you can actually compete individually. It's really cool, 10 per school, and then four of those are also part of the team. It's at fe on February 1st at HSU through the engineering department, but if you go to mathcounts.org, you definitely can see what's going on and ask your teacher, and if you're one kid you go, you get to compete because everyone competes individually. So um, tell your teacher, or I guess even your, your parent or guardian, because you know they could help sign you up to the school um, and then come hang out with all us math people <laughs> on February 1st. It should be Super very fun. fun. 17 kids are coming from Sunnybury. I have kids who barely get any right and they just have fun. Some get more right, but it's not about that. It's just about enjoying being together and talking about math and what we call like being nerds together and it's just super fun and it you don't have to get any right. It's just the experience and Anyway, so I've had a super fun week. A little nervous for the kids, but they're all happy, and That's great. we'll be practicing through February 1st. Very so. cool. Anyway. <laughs> Sounds great. Sounds like it a lot of fun. super fun. Gosh, you know, they should have something like that for science. I don't know. Well, I know in the high school level they have more stuff. Um, well, I know. they have the science fair. Yeah. But that's different. Like you know, that's different. Science competition. Yeah, competition, exactly. Like we had Olympics of the Mind when we were little, which kind of was that. Well, and there, I think there is something like that, but it's in Reading or, oh, or something. Far. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the other thing that just came up, um, on March 7th, there's Redwood Empire Math Tournament. Um, Brad Ballinger's in charge of it. He's a professor at HSU. And basically, 7th graders, 8th graders, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 
um, can go compete. And this is different. This isn't a national program. This is just through HSU math department to, you know, the math students there help correct the tests in Proctor and then there's usually a speaker that comes from out of the area last year it was on architecture on the world it was so cool the talk oh wow um so Redwood Empire Math Tournament REMT you can look that up I just found out they just set a date March 7th um and that is only through HSU math department but super fun it's 7th through 12th grade um so a lot different but super cool so Two math things coming up. <laughs> Opportunities, and local. Yeah, and I think Redwood Empire Math Tournament through the math department, you could just do, like, you don't have to go through your school. You could just go there and then pay there. It's totally different. Like, math counts as, like, a national organization. you got to apply in and school and everything. But, yeah, that Redwood Empire Math Tournament, March 7th, you could just have your family bring you and be fine. Super. <laughs> That's great. Oh, Very cool. Also at HSU, both are at HSU. Yes, <laughs> HSU, what a, a phenomenal resource we have yeah. <laughs> right here. It's so great to have a college here that's the, at the level that, that the professors and yeah. everything else. You get really to have is. things like that. You're like, hey, just go do this math competition. And if you didn't have HSU there, we wouldn't have you one have of those. You'd go somewhere else. Oh, yeah, I don't even yeah. know what you do for either. Yeah, you'd have to do something else. Yep. So, yeah. And ACR too, even though it's not there. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Anyway, call us with your science yes, and math please, questions. Please, please do. Call us or. Oh, no, sorry. No. Oh, my God. Ah, sorry, we're going to make this mistake more than once, but we can each correct each other, e which is really cool. Us. Teamwork. Email. Um, yeah, email us. Only. Email us. Go Only. to that thing, homeworkhotline.tv. There you go, and it will tell you what to do. Ignore what we're saying. <laughs> when we say the word call, that is wrong. <laughs> call. Okay. If call, I'm then email. I'm glad we both did it. And <laughs> program good. if call, then email. Yes. Okay. Good. All right. So our topic <laughs> on, on Tuesday, as you recall, was King, King Tides. King Tides. Yes. yes. And I read the definition for tide is is the uh, ability of one object to like distort the shape of another object. So it's oh. like distorting the shape of where, where we're going to find out what causes okay. tides. So, yeah. <laughs> The, the earth as the shape of a sphere that it is, well, it's actually not. It's kind of fatter in the center. It's an oblate spheroid. Oh. That is the shape of the planet. Oh. But but when the, the moon's gravity acts on it. like an ellipsoid? Uh, yeah, I think so. Could you draw one? Uh, <laughs> an ellipsoid. Back in the day. Here, wait. Wait, you got to do this. Oh, yeah. There you go. Okay. Oh, my gosh. This is like calculus. Whoa. Oh, yeah. This is this fun part. Oh. And you pick the width. Sweet. And oh then my we got to get rid of that. Yeah, that. I learned okay. that last time. Okay. Uh, this go ahead. Okay, we're just going to do this. Oblate zero. X. Okay, cool. Oh, is that helping you to draw it? Yeah, well, it's X, Y, Z axis. Okay. So we're going to go like, and then I'm probably going to go, probably make it wide, right? Oh, man. Oh, whoa. <laughs> uh, I'm more doing more of a sphere, I'm thinking, but I, ellipsoid is going to be. I thought you wanted that, so maybe we could bring it over here. Oh, <laughs> oh no, dang. Oh, look. Yeah, move it. There you okay. go. You got to use Yeah, spider. I don't know. I'm going to make, I don't want to make it as wide. It should be kind of like, so that's the there. I don't know. It's a wider around the middle than it is. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to mix yeah, it up. The oh, the monitor. Up. Hey, look at that. Oblate spheroid. There, okay. look at that. Okay, <laughs> so we have a picture. All right, cool. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. I'm used to making spheres, so I do the same amount each, and I'm like, that's my. So this is caused from the rotation of the Earth, and it's go we're going yeah. around pretty fast. But ellipsoids and are because they're basically, it's not going to be a sphere. Oh, you said it is a sphere. Well, it's a sphere, but it's a fat in the So that's why I feel sphere. like it's ellipsoid. It is ellipsoid. Ellipsoid is just a three-dimensional ellipse, yes. which is like an oval, yes. but three-dimensional. That is good, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Only not super ellipse. You know what I'm saying? It's, oh. it's a lot. So it's just it just bulges at the center, oh. the center of rotation where it's rot not the center. Oh, of rotation, is it kind of like the sphere of and then bulgy and yes, then sphere that's again? It. Oh, that's yes. not even sphere bulgy sphere. That's why they call it an <laughs> oblate sphere, I guess. So anyway, along with that, now we're going to go to the first slide that this, the first slide for today, and that slide is more facts, Amy. And so here we go. Okay. We're now going to quiz, Amy. And look at this, it's the entrance to Humboldt Bay. Okay. So we've got the ocean on the um, the bottom of the screen and yes. the bay on the top. All right, so what is the average depth of the bay? What do you think? I think you're going to get it right somehow. <laughs> look at those. Average all depth 11. of a Average the depth. Bay. So we're taking all the depth. Would it have to be 11 feet? Yeah, it we're, is. Because if you're going to go miles, you got to get way out in the ocean. And I think the other thing is you're doing it a certain time of, of you're not doing it during low tide. Because, yes. you know, low tide. <laughs> you're like, it's one Where's foot. the water? <laughs> yeah, the water's not uh, there so much. I mean, it has to, well, anyway. Average depth would be 11 feet. Yes, and then the maximum depth of the bay. 
That should be 40 feet. Yep. Because you can't, we're just not in the ocean, you can't, as you no, say. 40 miles, way too far. And inches doesn't make sense either. And that's the maximum depth. Okay, so yes, But the that's maximum right. depth of the ocean is crazy deep. I mean, oh, yes. the real, the out in the ocean. It is crazy deep. Because you have extra deep. different animals that live way, way, so, way down there. So to be honest about Humboldt Bay, it really is a lagoon. And what a lagoon is, <laughs> is it's an area where there's water, but it's an area that is a lot smaller than a normal bay, even though we call it a bay because, yeah. it, you know, that's oh. our legitimate bay. But um, it's a lagoon because it's a place that, that receives water from freshwater sources and then is a certain depth. And it's just going to keep on getting less and less deep because sediment comes. We're going to talk about oh, that yeah. next. So okay. let's look at the next <laughs> slide. The next slide is a picture here of, oh, now there is a video on the right, but I don't know if we can play it. So let me just explain it. Um, that's the entire bay. You can see the picture yes. there. Okay. And, um, so what this is explaining is all those, remember those creeks? We had Jacoby, can we name the rest of them? Salmon. Salmon, elk. And, do we do Jacoby, elk, salmon? salmon. Jacoby, elk, and, oh man, okay, well anyway, I can think of them when I go look at it. Do we do the arcade one we did? Freshwater, freshwater, freshwater. Yeah, okay. okay. That's freshwater. between your week arcade. Yes, yes. okay, so, so all of these are dumping into, now at the top of all of those, at the top of their watershed where they're okay. running the fastest, they go through um, the soil and the rocks and they break them down. Yes. And as they break them down, the water moves them. And as it moves down towards the bay, it starts then slowing down because at the beginning it's steep and then it gets more yeah. s less slopey. Okay, and as it as it slows down, it that was what this video would show. But as it slows down, it drops whatever sediment it's carrying. Oh, that it was all those fast sediment. Away. Everybody is rock pieces of rock and pieces of soil. So th that gets dumped into the bay. And then if that gets in there, then the water's less deep because there's more stuff on the bottom. That is right. So that's what happens to the bay just naturally. That's just a natural Don't animal lives in, animals live in the sediment though sometimes, or yeah. organisms, oh, I guess. Oh, absolutely, Organ because think of all the shorebirds that are sticking yeah. their beaks down into the, yeah, for all the worms and the yeah. crustaceans yeah. and the mollusks. Yeah, definitely. So now if we go to the next slide, I think we're gonna have all right, so this is how we make the bay deeper because we couldn't have the ships come in without no, dredging. <laughs> yeah, so, so we have to. So why do we have to? Because we have stuff going in and out, especially forest products like chips. And we used to have paper when we had the mill, or not pulp, mm. not yeah. paper. Um, but so all these places, uh, Fairhaven Business Park, the Chief Export Dock, all those places are places where a, a ship needs to come in and then pick up the load and then come back out. Uh -huh. and, and there's no way it could do that without that. It, over on the, uh, the left side is a dredge. And so what the dredge does is it scoops up the sediment and then it puts it, see behind it, it looks like it's, there's a little lump behind it kind mm -hmm. of. That lump is m the sediment and it's, it's gonna take it away. And they dump that sediment out. They used to do it into the ocean and now they have a different place that they dump it. But but they get it out of the bay. Yeah, it's called yes. bay spoils, basically, okay. which is just the stuff that came from those all those creeks and then filled the, the bay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so if we go to the next slide, that ship has to make it into Humboldt Bay. I've seen it when you're at the end of Del Norte, if you go on the trail of the Hikshari Trail, you'll sometimes see yes, the ships. you will. It's so exciting and huge. when you see it. When you it's see very it, cool. Like, and this ship, it isn't, lo doesn't look very full at this point, but when it gets full of chips or when it gets full of, of lumber, then yeah. it, it, it's gonna sink down. And if it sank, we have to have it 40 feet so that these ships like this can make yeah. it. And they'll know to come in when it's not like when it's high tide or high, like yeah. they know that. They don't try to come in at low tide. Right, <laughs> and that little guy right there next to it, that little ship is called a pilot ship. Oh, and okay. that pilot ship goes with it to kind of guide it and say here, because we have a really dangerous bay entrance. It's just, uh, there's a lot going on. It's pretty narrow. And so there's all kinds of uh, turbulent water and waves and stuff like that. And so to, to get them to do it correctly and safely, they is have- Is that the little, jetty then? Yep. Yeah. The jetties are on either side. Okay. So there's the north and the south yeah. jetty on either side. Yeah. Those are fun That's to right. look at the jetty oh when it's gosh. when like the storm's coming, it's yes. really pretty. Not like stand on it, but No, like the <laughs> don't stand <laughs> on it. You know what I mean? But just yes. drive up and look right there. It is. It's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. So that's the the uh, story about why you have to dig the bay out. Cuz it's just a natural thing. I mean, yeah. if it was we did nothing, it, this whole thing would just fill in, it would become a marsh. Yeah, and you would just have like almost no water, just wet muddy, right? Wet muddy, which should when uh, no ships would come in. Right. And we're like we're a coastal 
like town county and we and need we're a port. that. We're yeah, a port. We're a port, yeah. It requires <laughs> um, the money to, or the ability to move yeah. the goods, yeah. I mean, it's hard to take all those wood chips and put that amount, look how much that, that ship can carry versus a truck. Yeah, oh, just. Yeah, it's not even comparable. And this truck would have to go to China. <laughs> Or the Ukraine or something. I mean, it has to go. And a ton of t a ton of trucks, like a lot of trucks. <laughs> right. A whole bunch of trucks. And talk about that w couldn't even work, right? <laughs> no, the trucks. No. There's no. There's no bridge to. Uh, no. no. Over the the Pacific Ocean. So there you go. And you can't fly it. I mean, that'd be too expensive. No. No. Right. You need so the ships. yeah. They so have to dredge the bay. What is it calling? Dredging, dredging the bay. Dredging, dredging the bay. Yeah. Suck taking out the sediment and laying it over there and moving the sediment. Yeah, that's it. So it's important. And that's why they're actually, if you look, basically this whole thing stops at the bay, so at the, the bridge. See, the Samoa Bridge uh -huh. is that green line at the top on the right. So they, they don't go into the Arcata Bay. It's way too, there's, it's not deep enough. You know, boats like the Matakit can go into the Arcata Bay. Okay, it's smaller. It's a lot smaller, but it's not picking up a bunch of <laughs> goods, yeah getting really heavy and really deep. Cool. Is there any math that you're doing that you are yeah, still sure? doing? I'm still doing linear math. Are Actually, you? yeah, in my morning math, eighth grade common core, I do linear. And then also I'm teaching integrated. Um, one, to some kids, and it's really cool, you go from doing just linear where like snow's falling at the same rate to like trend lines or line of best fit, where it's real life data where you can't you have to like average and do the oh. best you can. Yeah. So. Oh, that's cool. I don't know. We could do something. Yeah, sure, good. Something like that. This little thing, you better move it. Wait. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, basically, what I'll do this time, um, just for fun, is I'll. Oh man, I it's did your that. It's your I know, I know, I know exactly what you're doing because that's how <laughs> I do it too to make sure that it's the line is straight. I mean, <laughs> on a whiteboard. Yeah. So basically, oh, that's horrible. Uh, okay, I'll just make it it's work. It's all right. So basically what happens with a trend line is you might have like, um, like you might have some different dots in different places that are real life. I don't know if I can think of a real life thing right now, but maybe. And then how do you find a, like a line for that? You, you can't, you, you wouldn't connect it. You're like, oh, it's a pentagon. But no, <coughs> X is getting, is increasing to the right and then y is increasing up and so basically what you do is you average it let's do a different color uh, do, 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 do. do i have red already green uh -uh. and then you would kind of what you're trying to do when you average it now hopefully the dots are closer this is not um, very strong <laughs> but you basically kind of want to do something like that that's probably you basically we, we've oh man we find out that we have um, what are called residuals, and that, uh, make it black, okay. Um, that's these lengths, the difference in the y values. And what you want to do is you want to get as close as you can to all the dots. So you want the least residuals, the least difference between basically what you're averaging and the actual data but you also want to have the same amount above positive residuals and negative residuals. And you have to do the best you can, and then you find a line by going through basically lattice points. So I will do that <laughs> with my not accurate thing, but that's okay. I'm gonna think, and you basically, because you're kind of taking, this is real life data, so I would, need, I would probably pick lattice points that are close to here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, make it bigger. Okay, and then you're gonna find basically, I we talked about on Tuesday that the formula is called y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. So to figure out that trend line, the average of that data, um, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my two points, which are zero, zero. Lattice points are basically where it crosses on the corner. It's more accurate if you <laughs> <laughs> regular pencil um, and then basically that's gonna help you get the best picture of the data so this is one two three four five six up four approximately 
So to find the slope, slope is like when you lift your foot, it's rise over run or change in y over change in x. So my change in y is going to be 4. And my change in x is going to be 6. So that's my slope, which is up 4 to the right 6. So my m, which is my slope, is change in y over change in x, which is 4 over 6, which simplifies dividing by 2 on the top and the bottom to 2 thirds. So that's my slope. So then, once you have that, 2 thirds x, you say plus b. And then you can plug in what the easiest point is, the lattice point. And then, which I'm going to pick 0, 0, because that's easier. So 0 equals 0 plus b. So it goes through the origin, which we already know. But sometimes it doesn't. So if my b is 0, my equation is y equals 2 thirds x. And then you can take a situation like, which one were we were doing? Like, we were doing independent x was like inches of cardboard, and then dependently it was grams of cereal. And so I don't know that that would apply to that, but it's just one scenario of what things we did to look at like trend lines, because it varies. Some of those boxes of cereal could be, you know, they could dump more cereal, less cereal. It's just kind of like an average. Um, and then you can basically find the average, and then you can say, well, you know, if I want to plug in something in the future, say like 7, I can use this formula to see what the y value would be. And it's an average, and I'll, we're going to learn to put it in our calculators because calculators are more accurate, but it's kind of fun as humans trying to get close um, without having calculators to kind of understand it better. So anyway, that's the... That's cool, Amy. A little bit. It, it can <laughs> help you to predict things too, yes, right? Yes. So like in science, when you do something like this, then yeah. you can say, well, if we change the temperature or whatever, then what would we expect yeah, on y to or be? x. Yes. And you might, and then we did, what we did today, which was really cool, is you're only as accurate as like your least accurate data. So you pick your biggest residual. So I can go back to this. So my biggest residual is here. And then what you can do is you basically go, you draw like a parallel line. You take that length down here. Oops, OK, gosh, oh my goodness. <laughs> Sorry, it's just so, I, I'm so accurate in my regular teaching life, and it's so hard. <laughs> but it's OK. <laughs> uh, OK, anyway, it's basically the same length here. And then you draw another parallel line, and then basically your data is only as good as that. Sweet, sweet. And so it's kind of fun. I mean, that used to be stuff we I did in oh, college. That is so and cool. this is integrated one, which is so freshman, sophomore. Wow. But it applies to science, it applies oh my to gosh. math, statistics, everything, real so life. <laughs> let's talk about the zoo, because I went there last night with okay, Ted, my husband, oh yeah, and uh, we went to the zoo and saw um, they, they have these conservation lecture series. So they were talking about fishers, which is a is a carnivore that lives in the forest. It looks like a it's a relative of a weasel. Looks like oh, a weasel, okay. and they eat squirrels. And the squirrels and the squirrels eat acorns. So they were trying to look at how, like tan oak, especially acorns. So they were looking at data, literally, from, and how they were attracting the squirrels and the mart uh, the martins. Um, they were fishers. Um, was with uh, peanut butter. <laughs> and so they'd smear the tree with <laughs> peanut butter, and along would come the fisher or the, and they would take pictures and see who's coming and, and like they, the, the data, like which, which forest do they like? Do they like a conifer forest? Do they like, so it, this is like data applied completely. You can apply it to like any, I just thought yeah. of the cardboard syrup going yeah. pouring into it, but like there's other, yeah. you know, things that you can do. Right. Like, um, you know, hours of sleep and how much you do, so, like, watch TV or work out or I mean you can do things like that like does that affect your sleep yes or, there's just other things that you right. can look at we're just so starting cool. it but we're yeah it's really it's good it's because this data that was analyzed gathered and analyzed um, for uh, Sierra Pacific Industries is Sierra Pacific is the the uh, the lumber yeah. company that owns the land and they asked actually this grad student from Humboldt State to come and do this study because they said we think we have a place for fishers and fishers are almost considered now endangered threatened at least uh -huh. so um, the data was actually used to they said what you need is you need tan oak tan oak is a type of tree and this tan oak uh, produces the acorns for the squirrels so the fishers can stay healthy so it was all just like <laughs> this whole thing and they were able to share that with um, because normally when you cut trees down Sierra Pacific does in conifers because so trees yeah. that have little needles yeah. they um, they spray uh, to kill everything else because it 
shades the uh, trees they want yeah, out. Yeah. So they're saying don't go light on the herbicide, don't spray so much because make some of those trees so they come up so then the fishers will be oh. all right. And the squirrels and the acorns. Make it work for everyone. Yeah, it was very <laughs> cool. So <laughs> math, it's practical and it's and amazing. And they're making like, that's, this is common core. I mean, some people like it or don't like it, but it really does change from all, math was so abstract you can't retain to really putting it, let's look at real life things. Let's look at real data and make it apply to our lives and life, so. Right, makes a huge difference. Yes. So, you know, we, we didn't ever finish completely. Oh my gosh, and then the next time we're on, we'll talk about tides <laughs> and specifically what causes them, so. And we anyway. appreciate you tuning in and uh, we'll be on later and next yeah, yeah. next week, two new hosts. Oh my on, gosh, yeah. We'll be back we'll be later very on exciting. the season, so. Yeah, yeah, later on. We're in February, yeah, yes. February. Yes. 10, 11, 12, something like that. Bye. So, See you. Bye, you guys. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in.